Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today is a big day. Phil Town of the Rule One Fund just released quarter one activity from 2021, okay? I was thinking we weren't gonna see this until the end of June. And here we are, 21st of May. And we get to see what Phil Town did in the first quarter of 2021, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm gonna link, of course, to this SEC filing, uh, which gives kind of the snapshot of what's in the Rule One Fund as of March 31st, 2021. Uh, you've got all of the stock holdings, you know, purchased options, puts, sold options, puts, there's a call option in there. So, you know, there's a fair bit to look through. Uh, but as every quarter, what I've done is I've scraped the number of shares owned, put it into this spreadsheet where I track each quarter uh, what Phil Town owns so we can see the changes. It's just a lot easier to get a snapshot of what's happened over time. So this, this is real time what's happening in Phil Town's portfolio as of first quarter 2021. Uh, you see here in the top six positions, Bank, OZK, CF Industries, Boeing, Huntington Ingalls, Gildan Activewear, and Armada Hoffler, uh, the REIT that Phil Town owns. There's no change in the top six positions, okay? So not, not a super high level of activity in the first quarter of 2021 for Phil. Now, the things he did... He added 13% to this gold ETF, okay? So maybe getting a little bit more bullish on gold, which could also mean bearish on the U.S. dollar, fears about inflation. Uh, Phil Town has talked about that in you know, his podcast and, and other places. So a slight increase in this gold ETF, which brings it to 4.2% of the portfolio. Uh, nothing for Sturm Ruger. Again, guys, Sturm Ruger, it's been showing up in the magic formula, okay? Uh, and there is a write-up in Value Investors Club from just over two years ago. Might be a good time to try to wrap your head around Sturm Ruger, you know, if, if you're interested in, in that kind of a business. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway needs no introduction, hasn't changed that position uh, in over a year. Uh, the price has come up quite a bit. I remember last year, I think at the lows, uh, a year ago in March of 2020, Berkshire was getting down around 160, okay? So it's it's been roaring back uh, the last year. And of course, there are a lot of super investors who have been buying into Berkshire. Um, in fact, Buffett and Munger have been buying back shares of Berkshire. So they seem to think that it's been at a good price recently. But again, it's, it's run up a bit. Uh, Ulta Beauty. So again, no change with Ulta Beauty. Still around 3% of the portfolio. Uh, two new positions down here at the bottom. So just nibbles from Phil Town. Sanderson Farms. I know he had... Uh, I'm pretty sure he had some put options sold uh, for Sanderson Farms as of the last filing. So perhaps, um, you know, he was put these shares of Sanderson Farms. Um, but, you know, that's just over 1% of the portfolio. Uh, and I believe Sanderson Farms, I think it's a chicken, a chicken farming, I believe, is what Sanderson Farms is. You know what, guys? We don't have to speculate, okay? We're going to jump into ticker here. And very quickly, um, figure out what Sanderson Farms is. Sanderson Farms. Quickly, yes. Uh, integrated Poultry Processing Company. Produces, processes, markets, distributes. Okay, so all things chicken effectively there. Headquartered in Mississippi. So that's a new position for Phil Town. Uh, and then Barrick Gold. I was surprised to see Barrick Gold. Of course, you know, Barrick, uh, everyone, you know, Barrick made the news last year because it was uh, discovered that Berkshire Hathaway 
bought into Barrick in the second quarter of uh, 2020. Of course, just mere months later, Berkshire sold out of Barrick Gold. So uh, it's interesting to see Phil buying Barrick Gold in the first quarter. Uh, he may have gotten Barrick Gold under $20 per share. Okay, I think the first quarter low was like you know, $18 some per share. So lower price than what Berkshire was able to get in at. Uh, but again, you know, it's it's not a huge position. Um, may just be a way for Phil to build his position in gold without going all in the gold ETF. Um, you know, get exposure to gold through a, a cash generating business rather than a commodity that doesn't produce anything like this, this ETF. So, um, that's the picture. We've got a cash position just shy of 30%, um, which is still a very strong cash position, right? We can see Phil didn't do all that much, at least in the way of stocks in the first quarter. Uh, but let's take a look at his options positions, okay? Sometimes we can glean, you know, what what he's what he would like to buy at what price by looking at what... Um, put options he's writing, what, what contracts he's writing there. So let's scroll down. And you can see here purchased options. Okay, so he bought put options on Boeing. He bought put options on the S&P 500, okay, SPY. Now, I don't know a ton about options. This is a little confusing to me uh, that this exercise price for SPY is 3550 okay? I think the current price of SPY, the SPY, is in the 400s. Let's, let's, I'm just gonna check it out real quick here. SPY, uh, $415, okay? So I, I don't really understand what's happening, why this exercise price is so far above uh, the current price. That must be a, particular option strategy that, that Phil is putting on. Uh, but, you know, w when you look at the put options he's buying, it, it also helps to look at the put options he's selling um, because some of them match up. You see the Boeing company uh, exercise of 200 that, that he uh, bought. And then down here, the, the put options that he sold, you've got a Boeing exercise price of 210 and another at 205. So I'm guessing that's a particular strategy um, that might not tell us, you know, straight up at what price Filltown would like to own Boeing. Um, and then there, there's some other really interesting ones down here. Of course, the, the SPY, there's also a put that he sold for SPY. So again, that's, that may be a similar strategy as what he's doing with Boeing. Uh, but you see here, Sold put options. You've got iShares Silver, okay, a silver ETF with an exercise price of $22.50. Now, the current price of that silver ETF is $25.55, okay? So it's, you know, within shouting distance of, of him potentially being put those shares uh, or those units of the silver ETF. And I've never heard Phil Town talk about silver. Uh, I don't know, you know, how, how he's thinking about silver, if it's just another inflation hedge or if he's thinking about it a little bit differently than his gold position. So if any of you guys have heard Phil talk about silver, let me know in the comments what, what you think he's going after uh, with, with that exposure. Uh, Sprouts Farmer's Market, okay? Uh, exercise price of 28. This is interesting because the current price of Sprouts is 25.98, about $26 per share. So it's very possible uh, that we're going to see Sprouts in Phil Town's holdings, uh, stock holdings in the next uh, quarterly filing, okay? Because the uh, strike is above the current price. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, and then Sturm Ruger, you know, 67.50, the current price is 
six no what is the current price we, we can find it here uh, 76 dollars okay and I, I've seen a number of Sturm Ruger puts that Phil Town has sold over the uh, filings over the last multiple quarters so uh, maybe he's just getting some pretty compelling prices um, some pr compelling premiums to be selling uh, RGR put contracts um, so yeah that that's those are my those are my thoughts there uh, and then he did he did sell one call option okay on on Sturm Ruger so you can see selling a put and then selling a call for Sturm that, that's probably another one of those uh, straddle strategies I don't even know uh, what the terminology for these things are but uh, big news here that I'm seeing uh, obviously the two new positions in Sanderson Farms and um, and Barrick Gold and then in the put options the silver ETF and Sprouts Farmers Market those, those are the things that kind of jump out at me here things to keep an eye on uh, in in future rule one filings so uh, the other thing I've noticed I, I should be tracking this guys I haven't been tracking this is net assets over each quarter okay because it would be interesting and you know it's not going to tell us exactly what returns Phil Town is generating he may have cash flowing in from other investors uh, I, I don't know how to parse that out if it's even possible to parse that out um, but it might be interesting to track you know how how quickly his fund is increasing year to year um, maybe not just just a thought there so anyway guys just wanted to push this video out real quick as just today these filings were released uh, I guess one other thing I want to do I want to show you guys how to find Phil Towns uh, quarterly you know holdings okay it's it's not super straightforward so sec.gov I clicked on the company filings we're gonna go to world funds terst not terst trust um, and world funds trust seems to be some kind of umbrella organization where a bunch of different funds file their um, filings underneath that umbrella so you can see here just today uh, filing date 521 there's a bunch of these that were released so what we're gonna do uh, here's a trick too you know the sec.gov website has changed some things around recently um, I think it may be this one if you click on the link uh, it's gonna take you to this gnarly looking thing right this is Union Street Partners value fund uh, which which we're not interested in but let me let me just find rule one so here it is rule one fund so this is the thing I used to create the last video about Phil Towns holdings and it's a pain you know you scroll through you gotta it's just it's it's a lot of hassle but here's the trick instead of clicking this link uh, click this box that says filing okay and now we're gonna see a couple different options the one we want is this 321.htm for the rule one fund okay and you can see right here rule one fund click on that and it gives you this beautiful you know display of his current holdings okay so that's that's the tip I've got for you guys uh, this quarter hopefully that continues to be presented in this format it's so much easier to work with and again, I will link to this particular form in the description. Uh, let me know, you know, if anything jumped out at you, if anything surprised you this quarter from Phil Town. Uh, and with that, guys, I will leave you till the next video. Take care.